Hey everybody, it's David Sirota. So you may have heard the recent news that President Trump signed a bill from Congress uh, that repeals the so-called forced arbitration rule that was originally put in place by the Obama-era Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Congress passed the bill repealing that on a tie-breaking vote from Mike Pence. Uh, the financial industry didn't want uh, that rule in place. What did that rule do? That rule was designed to prevent financial companies from forcing you, the customer, to sign away your legal rights to join class action lawsuits against banks. Now, these are so-called forced arbitration clauses, which basically are designed to put you, if you have a problem with a bank, they're designed to put you in an arbitration process as opposed to taking the company to court in a class action lawsuit. The critics of the effort to repeal that rule said that this was an effort by the financial industry to essentially disempower consumers. Now here's what didn't get a lot of discussion when President Trump signed that bill. The fact that President Trump's business empire has used some of these same forced arbitration clauses as they relate to the Trump Organization's own employees. You may remember this got a little bit of press way back when, the, uh, when Trump was running for president uh, during the campaign. There was a, a bunch of headlines about non-disclosure agreements. But those non-disclosure agreements included some of the similar kinds of forced arbitra arbitration clauses at issue in the CFPB rule. Here's what CBS reported way back when, before the whole rule was being debated. The Trump Organization agreement bars employees from going to the courts for resolu resolution of issues related to, quote, unpaid compensation, missed meal or rest breaks, wrongful termination, unfair competition, discrimination, harassment, or retaliation. That's CBS News reporting on the Trump Organization's uh, non-disclosure agreements. And a Trump Organization spokesperson told the news organization, quote, because it is faster, more cost-effective, and tends to level the playing field, it is commonplace for large companies like the Trump Organization to use arbitration as the preferred method for resolving disputes. That's certainly true. It is the preferred method from corporate America. Uh, in dealing with these issues. Uh, it wants to go to arbitration where the company's own hand-picked arbitrator gets to decide whether there was a problem or not, and employees sign away their rights to take it to a truly independent court. So Trump signs the rule effectively getting rid of the prohibition on forced arbitration clauses. Uh, and that rule was considered a landmark effort to try to rein in these forced arbitration clauses generally. Now, it only applied to the financial sector, but again, it was seen as the first effort to try to regulate these uh, forced arbitration clauses to protect uh, the right of people to go into court. Trump had a history with these provisions a history with them when it came to his own employees. There's still bills in Congress trying to reinstate the rule, trying to strengthen regulations on these clauses. But it's important to remember that Trump had experience with this, potentially an interest in, in keeping these kinds of provisions legal. And these kinds of provisions are pervasive. They affect millions and millions of Americans, whether in a customer relationship or an employee relationship. And they're designed to seem like they're protecting your rights they're more efficient, they're, they're easier, they're more in the spirit of consensus. But what they really do in practice is prevent people from exercising their most basic legal rights in a court of law.